Polyatomic or molecular ions are charged molecules consisting of two or more atoms that are covalently bonded together. When writing Lewis structures for polyatomic ions, just remember, all available valence electrons must be accounted for. Additionally, adjustments to the total number of valence electrons must be made according to the charge of the particular ion. Hi, Mr. B here. In this video, I will explain how to write Lewis structures for a variety of polyatomic ions. Let's begin with one of the simpler polyatomic ions known as ammonium. The chemical formula for ammonium is NH4+. When writing the Lewis structure for this polyatomic ion, the nitrogen will serve as a central atom, since nitrogen will form more bonds than hydrogen. So we place a nitrogen surrounded by four H's. The total number of electrons available for bonding may be determined as follows, where each hydrogen possesses one valence electron, and the nitrogen possesses five valence electrons. This gives a total of nine. So there are nine electrons available for bond. However, the charge of the ammonium ion is a plus one. This means that we must now subtract one electron from our total, which leaves eight. Now the atoms are connected via a line which represents a covalent bond. One, two, three, four. So by drawing four covalent bonds, we've now consumed eight electrons, which leaves zero. To complete our Lewis structure, now we place brackets around the NH4 and a charge of plus one outside of the brackets. This represents the proper Lewis structure for the ammonium polyatomic ion. Another common polyatomic ion is the polyatomic ion known as carbonate. The formula for the polyatomic ion carbonate is simply CO3 with a negative 2 or 2 minus charge. When writing the Lewis structure for the carbonate polyatomic ion, use C as your central atom, surrounded by three O. Oxygen will contribute six valence electrons for a total of 18. And of course, carbon possesses four valence electrons. 18 plus four is 22 electrons. However, the oxidation state of the carbonate polyatomic ion or the carbonate anion is a minus two. This means that we must now add two electrons to our total, connecting each atom to the central atom via a line, which represents a covalent bond. We'll consume two, four, six electrons. This will leave 18 electrons. The 18 electrons will now be distributed evenly amongst the perimeter atoms. So each perimeter oxygen will receive six electrons. This will consume the 18, leaving zero. Clearly, in this particular case, carbon is not satisfied since carbon now is sharing one, two, three pair of electrons for a total of six. To completely satisfy the carbon atom, 
we must create a double bond between one of these oxygens and the central carbon atom. So let's just take this pair of electrons and share it with the carbon, which means we now erase away that pair. This represents the proper structure for the carbonate polyatomic ion. To complete the Lewis structure, place the carbonate in brackets with the oxidation number written outside of the brackets. This is the proper Lewis structure for the carbonate polyatomic ion. Now let's write the Lewis structure for a polyatomic ion known as nitrate. The chemical formula for nitrate is NO3 with a negative one charge. To write the Lewis structure for this polyatomic ion, simply write a nitrogen surrounded by three oxygens. Not oxygen will possess six valence electrons, therefore one, two, three, 18 electrons are available from our oxygen atoms. And of course, nitrogen possesses five. This gives a total of 23 electrons available. But remember, the oxidation state of nitrate is a minus one, so we add one electron for a total of 24. To complete the structure, simply connect the central atom to the perimeter oxygens, which will consume six electrons. This leaves 18, which are now shared equally by the perimeter atoms. Clearly, the nitrogen is not satisfied. Therefore, in order to satisfy the nitrogen, we must make a double bond between the N and one of the O's. So let's remove two dots here and make a, another bond. To complete the Lewis structure, simply place the structure in brackets and write the oxidation state, which is a minus one, outside of the brackets. This represents the Lewis structure for the nitrate polyatomic ion. Now let's write the Lewis dot structure for the polyatomic ion known as phosphate, where phosphate possesses a minus three oxidation number. P in the center, surrounded by oxygens. Total number of electrons due to oxygen is 6, 12, 18, 24. 5 from phosphorus gives 29. And of course, the oxidation state is a minus 3, so we add 3. This gives 32 electrons available. Now we connect the perimeter atoms to the central atom via a covalent bond, consuming 8 total which leaves 24. And the 24 electrons are now shared equally by the perimeter oxygens. At this point, we enclose the structure in brackets and place the oxidation state outside of the brackets. And this represents one of the Lewis structures for the phosphate polyatomic ion. CLO3- represents a polyatomic ion known as chlorate. When writing the Lewis structure for chlorate, simply write a Cl surrounded by three oxygens, where each oxygen contributes six electrons and a chlorine contributes seven. For 18 plus seven is 25. So these four atoms will contribute a total of 25 electrons. However, the chlorate polyatomic ion also possesses a negative charge. So we must add one electron for a total of 26. Connecting each oxygen to the central atom via a covalent bond will consume six. This leaves 20 electrons. Now distribute the electrons equally among the permanent atoms will result in the consumption of 18, which leaves two. The two remaining electrons are now placed on the central chlorine atom. 
to complete the Lewis structure, place the chlorate in brackets with the oxidation number outside of the bracket.